at Renault Zoe here, which fails to charge from any charge point, so whether that be fast or slow. A number of fault codes which we'll go through, but the interesting thing is, um, and I hope you can see this, is when I bring this in here, um, at the centre pin of the charge inlet, there's debris inside there, there's a piece of plastic, so I thought, great, we'll take that piece of plastic out and it'll all charge. Uh, no, no such luck. Nevertheless, um, in this controlled environment, we're going to have a look at uh, CP and PP, uh, lock pin actuator position and current flow, and then... Once we've got a debris out, find out why it won't charge. Give you a, an idea of the symptom. So we're ready for charging here. So I'm just going to reposition the camera. Um, push the charge plug in and have a listen. In fact, yeah, I hope you can see that. The actuator's jumping as well. So it's trying to engage the lock pin with the EVSE connector, but no joy. So given the lock pin was moving in and out, and you can see that in this actuator current here, and our lock pin position signal has not changed. Uh, let's go into the guided test and just have a look at the PP circuit for type 2, because we can test for the resistor inside the connector. So it's charge vehicle tests, and it's uh, proximity line type 2. And the guidance settings file, let's pull the whole thing in so we can have a read through. So here's a description on how to do this. Remember, this test is going to use the resistance lead and the type, uh, the cable under test. This is uh, mode three, but it's disconnected from the mode three charger. So uh, we're basically testing just the lead, not connected to the mains, of course, and that's the value of the resistor inside the type two connector. And then from that value obtained, we can work out if we follow this down here um what the resistance values um obtained equate to in terms of current capability so let's have a look at that now we've got the lead connected and there we are our resistance on this one is approximately 218 ohms so if we refer back to the guided test 218 ohms we're approximately so it's a 32 amp connector the connector on this type 2 style charger is capable of handling 32 amp it's a quick test you can do to verify that the vehicle responds to p p to p e circuit but we know in that previous test we got a resistance value of about 220 ohm here i've got two panel mount resistors linked in series these are 120 ohm each that makes 240 Nevertheless, the vehicle should respond, so uh, we'll connect PP to PE via these resistors and hopefully we can capture the lock pin engaging. There it goes in the top of the picture. And you just see it there and then press the unlock button on the vehicle remote. There we go, that disengages the lock pin. So let's do that once more. Again, it wasn't relevant for this test. The debris was the reason why the pin wouldn't engage. But it's worth noting that you can do this test. There we go. So that verifies PP, PE, and also the fact that the charger responds accordingly. And of course, if you're measuring lock pin actuator current and lock pin position with the scope, you can verify those circuits as well. Okay, so as luck would have it, with the debris removed from the Type 2 charge inlet, there we go. You can see on the scope there as well, lock pin actuators engaged, positions changed, uh, CP, and then the noise, of course, on there as well. So that's cool. We know that's charging. But, however, nothing is straightforward. So that's mode 2. And then let's plug in mode 3. So this is uh, 11 kilowatt fast charging. Now, lock pin's engaged, which is great. We'll have a look at the display there. There's no CP. All right, so there is no communication between this style charge EVSE and the vehicle. So we need to find out why that is. Okay, on the right, the wide socket, we've got the slow charger, that's mode two. And on the left, we've got the gray, which was the uh, fast charger. So it's... Um, 11 kilowatt on the left 2.2 on the right 
and it was the CP circuit that um, that was having us at the moment. So I've got um, differential probe here. Of course, gloves are on. The reason being, these are both plugged into the mains, and we want to check the CP voltage, which originates from within the EVSEs. So middle ping's ground, and CP is top left, looking at this angle, and you can see there that we've got um, plus nine volts, minus twelve. So there is activity on there. Move this across now to here, and you can see there we have nothing. All right, so we either have a cable issue or we have a problem with EVSE. So let's follow this round because what is interesting is we've noticed that with this device here, we've really got to drive this cable home. So there we go. That's gone all the way in that. So it looks like this is no more than a connection issue. There we go, we are connected, and look at that, we've now got CP. Alright, so could this just be connection issue on this cable at the plug-in Mo3 charger? Alright, a final note on the charger. So this is the Mo3 device that we're using, and notice the blue light is flashing there. And here's the connector that we had our issue with. So when we insert this, at that point there, it looks inserted. The blue LED has gone from flashing to fixed. And that's because the proximity is detected. So you would think at that point that it should charge. But of course, as we know, you'd really got to drive this connector home before we got the 12 volts on the CP. And then by comparison, <laughs> another charger here. This is a different lead. Completely different altogether, of course. The effort required to put that in there is minimal. Well, the proof, as they say, is in the pudding. So let's have a look. We've got the guided test up here. Let's just run that. And we're going to plug in the um, 11 kilowatt fast charger. Let me just position the camera so we can see this. And insert that fully. We can see on the scope we've got CP activity. Contactors have gone over. And there we are. We can fans cut in and then there's noise on our waveform as well. So that is now fast charging. So um, all that for a connection issue and debris, but nevertheless, sequence diagnosis. I hope that there was a few good tips in there as well. Um, the one for the uh, PP to PE with the resistor, that's a good one. Um, and also testing CP voltage at the EVSE, please, you've got to be so careful there. You must have the right probes, the right equipment, cap rated, remember, differential probe, um, good gloves, personal protection, and the relevant training. All right, I hope that helps. So following on from that mode two and mode three CP test that I did back in the workshop, Something's concerned me since. So first of all, um, we probed the CP on the mode two and we did have activity, uh, which I thought was um, a plus six minus 12 volts. It was actually plus 12 minus 12. And that really is where I have the concern because it was actually a pulse width signal. Um, I didn't show it in the, in the video, but when you actually zoomed in on that capture, it's at one kilohertz, which is normally what happens with the mode two charger when you connect to the vehicle because it detects the resistor inside the onboard charger. You end up with a voltage dividing circuit, as we have, uh, can see here in the diagram. So why was it giving us that pulse switch signal when it wasn't actually connected to the vehicle? Well, I don't have an answer. I, I suspect that is something within the charger. And, and it's made me think that all chargers aren't made equal, like a lot of components, unfortunately. So. Here we've got two mode two chargers. Um, one is a genuine Volkswagen for our vehicle here, and then an aftermarket one as well. And I just want to test the CP circuit as I did back at the workshop. So again, using the differential probe, remember gloves, personal protection. We're gonna to go to uh, the CP and PE circuit. And you'll see there that we have 12 volts. So both of these are plugged into the mains. They are switched on, of course and our CP has 12 volts, but no pulse width. And let's go to the other one. So 
Volkswagen one and the aftermarket one, both are exactly the same. You can see there, they're both at 12 volts, not pulse width, because pulse width modulation should only start when we connect to the vehicle. So the vehicle seemed to handle that for some reason. Um, it, it wasn't an issue. Mode 2 was working on that vehicle, if you remember, once we'd removed the debris from the socket. I think it's something to be aware of. And as we go on, we'll test more and more. And of course, if something does come to light that we see these on other chargers, well, we'll mention it here. All right, thanks for watching.